In Times Like These, with John Kilpatrick. Hello, I'm Pastor John Kilpatrick, the pastor of the Brownsville Assembly of God Church within times like these. We're very happy tonight to be able to come back into your home with the gospel of Jesus Christ. As you can tell, tonight's program is a little bit different. This week's program and next week's program is going to be a little bit different because last Sunday, May the 23rd, I had in our sanctuary a true man of God from Romania. I had Brother Dimitri Dudeman from Romania that God had sent there and exiled from that country to America with a message from God for our errant country. And you know, folks, I don't think there's any good way to say this. I'm just going to come out and have to say it bluntly the way that I believe it. You know, it's one thing to be a sweet little pastor and nice little pastor and just not ruffle nobody's feathers and just come before people week after week and, you know, feed them and help them and all that. But God has called me to be more than a pastor and he's called we men of God to be more than just shepherds to shepherd people. He's called us to be watchmen on the wall and to look out and to see when danger is approaching and to see when ominous clouds of judgment are gathering. And I want to say to you tonight, from the depth of my heart that my heart is concerned as a man of God not necessarily just as a preacher or pastor but as a man of God as a watchman on the wall I see clearly that the clouds the ominous dark clouds are stacking up and gathering for the United States of America and I know many of you might be tempted right now to flip that channel and you want to go on to something else but I want you to hear me for a few moments I want you to stay tuned to this program tonight for many different reasons. Number one is because I want you to hear this Romanian preach the gospel. Now, in this program tonight, he's going to share his testimony about how God even sent angels to minister to him. You might say, well, Brother Kilpatrick, I don't believe that. Well, if you do away with angels and ministering spirits, you're just going to have to throw your Bible out in the trash can, set it on fire, and get rid of it, because it's full of it, both Old Testament and New Testament. You see, one of the things that disturbs me today is people have... Somehow they've taken the authority on themselves to go through the Bible with a fine-tooth comb and comb out the things they don't want and throw it out and keep the things they do want. But I tell you, we are commanded by God to accept the whole counsel of God. This is God's Word. And I can't find for the life of me where miracles have ceased. I can't find where healings have ceased and where God visits His people with dreams and visions and angelic visitations. You don't pray to angels. You know, you don't worship angels. But God does send His ministering spirits, and the Bible says that His, His angels are ministering spirits sent forth to minister for the heirs of salvation. And here's a man that was tortured, Brother Dimitri Dudeman, in Romanian prisons before Ceausescu was killed, and that iron curtain fell. Here's a man that was being tortured for the cause of Christ and smuggling Bibles into Russia and into Romania and Albania and other places over there in, in Europe. And as he was tortured beaten with clubs like a caveman's club with spikes driven through them and and his fingers slammed into a door and where they stuck out on the other side they'd stick reeds under his fingernails and a man that was had electric probes put in his ears and all over his head and a hood and he was sitting in an electric chair and, and he was electrocuted to the point that he had passed out and fallen his face in a pool of blood and he did that twice and God delivered him and he told me at the dinner table last Sunday, he said, not long after that I had to get dentures because I woke up one night and the electricity had so shocked my system till it killed the roots in my teeth and all my teeth fell out over a two or three night period. And I'd wake up in the middle of the night spitting my teeth out. Now when a man goes through something like that, my brother, when a man goes through that kind of torture, you can't tell me that God, if, that, if God has his hand on that man, you can't tell me that God's not going to send ministering spirits to minister to him. You see, one of the things in America why we don't believe things like that anymore is because we have, we have a comfort zone that Christians live in, and we're not persecuted, and we can't believe that God would do such things for people. But I tell you, everybody wants to see Leo the lion get locked jaw, but nobody wants to go in the lion's den. Everybody wants to see the three Hebrew children come forth from the fiery furnace with not even the smell of smoke on their clothes, but nobody wants to go in the flames. When God's people are put in a situation to where they have to suffer and are persecuted and they 
are suffering for the cause of Christ, God will go to whatever extent is necessary to minister to them and to preserve them to keep the message alive. Well, God delivered him from a Romanian prison and brought him to America. God even told him the day, the month, of the, day, the day of the month and the hour that he was going to be exiled from Romania and kicked out. And that God was going to send him to America. And he wound up in America and California. And the angel of the Lord even visited him there and gave him some messages for America. Now, the man that you're going to see tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is a man that is an humble man. A man that is non-pretentious, has nothing to lose, nothing to gain. He's just a man of God. When you see him, you'll see that. He's not looking for riches. He's not looking for big offerings. He's not a money preacher. He's not a big televangelist. He's just a simple man that went through hellish torture for the cause of Christ. And God laid his hand on him and sent him to this country with a message. And I tell you what, I had him at my church and I'm proud that I did. And my, my church received him so well. And the Spirit of God moved in our church services as we sat morning and that night and listened to him as the Spirit of God moved and people were moved and people began to realize that some of the things they think they suffer call persecution. They're not going through persecution at all after hearing this man. And, and we were made to realize that evening in the evening service how close the coming of Jesus Christ really is and how judgment clouds are looming Unless over America. There's a great turnaround and a repentance and a humbling. I don't know how much longer America can survive. May God help us to hear this man May God help us to hear the voice of the Spirit. These are crucial hours. Please stay tuned as you watch Demetri Dudeman. God bless you. But today we must put everything aside and believe that we are here with Christ. You know, I will not tell you fairy tales. I won't tell you stories. I'll only tell you God took me through. And if I'll have time, I will tell you about the wrath that is coming upon America. If I won't have time this morning, I heard the pastor that we were going to be here tonight too. So I'll finish what I won't say this morning this evening. I pray God bless this church with the Holy Spirit. You know, if you've never felt, I hope you feel the Spirit of God. And if until now you haven't known God, you haven't known the power of God fully, now is your time. Because God is Almighty. And the Christians here in America have lived in so many blessings. You know, you've never known what trouble was. You haven't known what torture is. You haven't known persecution. God has blessed you so much in this country. So that all the world may taste of your blessings. But the one mistake this country made is that it rejected God. The church of God. You know, I'm not talking about the world. But even those in the church. You know, God wants to wake up the church. This is why he prepared me in Romania. He took me through so many tortures. And he brought me to your country. That I may stand up and speak the gospel and of the power of God. Well, I was born in a Christian family. My dad pastored a Pentecostal church. Brothers, I want to tell you, I don't know what's in this church. But I feel like I got plugged in. You know, you have a lot of lights, I know. But there's a current that comes over some people. And that's not, you know, electricity. And this helps me speak to you better. You know, the light of God comes. And he begins to speak. My father pastored the Pentecostal church. You know, as every parent brings their child to church, my dad forced me to go to church also. But I told him, Dad, I don't like church. 
I'm going to run away from home for you to stop taking me. American. As many American children do. Mai Dumitru, nu te duci. He said, Dumitru, don't go. Dumitru, you will regret it.